Welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's video. As a quick reminder, we will be switching from our normal short daily uploads to longer videos every other day going forward. Today's video takes us to Austin, Texas. In the years 1884 and 1885, the African American community lived in great fear due to a twisted killer. This killer is possibly the first serial killer in American history. Although many people claim that H.H. Holmes has that disturbing claim, the Servant Girl Annihilator, as this killer would become known, carried out his crimes six years before Holmes. Let's get into it. Servant Girl Annihilator was a serial killer that terrorized the city of Austin, Texas between December 1884 and December of 1885. During that year, seven young women and one man would tragically lose their lives. It is important to understand what Austin was like in those days. Austin had been widely known as a rustic cow town with a population below 5,000, but in the 1880s that all changed. Austin sprung to life with three colleges and a blossoming economy and art scene. Many people began to refer to the city as the Athens of the West. Crime was extremely low during the smaller times in Austin, with most crimes being solved the same day that they were committed. Due to the Servant Girl Annihilator, the police force tripled in that one year alone. Molly Smith and Walter Spencer worked as servants for a very wealthy family in Austin. On December 30th, 1884, Spencer woke up shrieking in pain. He quickly realized that he had a large laceration across his face. As he scanned, he and Molly's cabin, he saw a trail of blood leading out the door. He quickly followed the trail, finding his love with dozens of stab wounds from her head to her toes. Police would find a bloody axe in the cabin. This night would mark the beginning of the demented killer's reign of terror over the city. On May 6, 1885, six months after the attack on Molly Smith and Walter Spencer, the killer would strike again. Eliza Shelley was a black cook that worked as a servant for a Texas state legislator. The killer struck while Eliza was asleep, attacking in almost the exact same way that he had done previously, only worse. Reports state that Shelley's head was basically split in half. Only two weeks after the death of Eliza Shelley, the Servant Girl Annihilator struck again. His third victim was Irene Cross. This attack was very similar to the first two, only the killer used a knife exclusively on Cross. She lived long enough to speak with police as they arrived on scene. Unfortunately, she passed away shortly thereafter. The Servant Girl Annihilator changed his modus operandi with his fourth victim. He broke into the home of servant Rebecca Ramey, but he did not attack her. Instead, he went after her 11-year-old daughter, Mary. He physically assaulted the young girl and then stabbed her through her ear with an iron rod. On December 26 of the same year, the killer would claim his fifth and sixth victims. This would be the first time that he took the life of two people in the same day. Gracie Vance awoke with the killer standing above her. As she shrieked in horror, her husband, Orange Washington, sprang to action and tried to subdue the perpetrator. Sadly, the man was able to overtake Mr. Washington, crushing his skull with an ax that he would later leave at the crime scene. He then proceeded to sexually assault two other women in the cabin before turning his bloodlust back to Gracie. He dragged her outside of the home, where he bashed her with a brick. Several clues were left at the crime scene, along with the two women who were assaulted including a gold watch that Gracie Vance was clutching in her palm when the investigators arrived. The Servant Girl Annihilator would change the profile of his victims in a drastic way on Christmas Eve, December 24th of 1885. Susan Hancock became his seventh victim and the first of two white women to lose their lives to the frenzied man. The change in victim profile was a shock to the investigators, as the killer had only gone after black servant girls before this night. Susan had been described as one of the most refined ladies in Austin. Hancock was found outside her home with her head split and a metal object protruding from it. Only one hour later, the stalker would claim his eighth body. On the opposite side of town, Eula Phillips was found lying in an alleyway in one of the most affluent areas of Austin. She was discovered face down with her head bludgeoned. 
These two murders would be the last victims that the servant girl annihilator would claim. Many theories and suspects would cloud the investigation of the murders. Prior to these events, the police in America had never really dealt with multiple killings from one man. They had over 400 suspects with several thoughts of motive, including racial tension and financial motivation. The husband of Eula Phillips, Jimmy Phillips, would be arrested, tried, and found guilty of her murder. The police believed that Jimmy had killed his wife under the auspice of the servant girl annihilator looming. After serving six months in prison for his wife's death, Phillips would be released after the court found that he had been found guilty under false pretense. There seems to be two strong suspects remaining. One was a Malaysian cook that worked at the Austin Hotel. Almost every death occurred within a very short walking distance of the hotel. The cook left his job at the hotel and moved away from Austin in January of 1886, coinciding with no more deaths. Some people have come forward to assert that the Servant Girl Annihilator and Jack the Ripper are the same person, with fingers pointing directly at the Malaysian cook. He is rumored to have moved to London from Austin with the Ripper slayings beginning shortly thereafter. Jack the Ripper's killing spree ended once the cook had moved from London as well. Now we move to a man that many historians and crime aficionados claim was the true servant girl annihilator, Nathan Elgin. There was a very important clue that the police did not release to the public. The killer had left footprints at every scene and these footprints were very unique. The prints showed that the annihilator was missing a big toe. Nathan Elgin happened to be missing the same toe and that wasn't the only thing that pointed to Nathan's guilt. In 1886, he was caught dragging a girl into a house with a knife in hand. The police followed them into the house and after a short altercation, they shot and killed Elgin. With the unique footprint and the attack witnessed by several people, it appears that the strongest suspect remaining would be Nathan. Thank you so much for joining us for this dark tale of one of the first serial killers in America. We are extremely grateful for all of your support. Please like, subscribe, share, and post a comment. Until the next one.